Hi, welcome back to uh, video two in a series on how to build a buy-to-let property empire. So just to recap, um, I recorded a, a first video. It was a bit of an overview and we introduced the idea uh, of a formula. Uh, four stages, find, fix, rent and repeat. And that's um, what we're going to uh, do to build the property empire. Um, so if you haven't seen the first video, circle back, watch that. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Um, I need to let you know as well, uh, uh, now at the end of this video, uh, I've got some viewing tools for you. You'll need those for the next video, so you might wanna download those. Uh, I'll give you the details later on. Um, coming up in the next videos are how to fix, rent, and then repeat, but for today, we're going to concentrate on find, how to find the right property, what the right property is, and then where to find it. Um, I realized I used a phrase in the first video, I said uh, the magic formula, I think I said the golden formula, and I said it a bit absent-mindedly, uh, but it is how I think about this. Um, I also sometimes call it the yellow brick road. Um, what I mean, what I'm trying to describe is that this whole process is it's very finely balanced there's not a lot of move, uh, room for maneuver. Um, you need the right, the right house in the right area at the right price with the right quality renovation and that renovation for the right price, the right tenant paying the right rent, uh, having the right end value um, for it all to fit together like a formula. It's a very specific thing. Uh, I, if I look at my own property portfolio or any property portfolio of anybody who's got multiples, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100, 1,000 properties, and I know people with 1,000 properties, um, they all conform to what I'm calling this, this golden calculation, golden formula. So let's just remind ourselves of the formula to start off with. First of all, we're going to develop to rent always. That's what we decided. Uh, we're going to buy a run, ha run down house at a discount. Uh, we're going to put in a cost effective renovation. So it's going to be the right renovation for the right price. Um, we're rent going to rent it and then we're going to refinance the property uh, to pull as much capital out as we can. So there we have some money left to buy property number two and then we can repeat it three, four. And that's how we build a property empire. So specifically spend only 80% of the developed value on buying and fixing the house um, then ensure that there's a, it, it, that the property stacks on a rental basis there's a, you're going to make a net net profit every single that house we buy makes I, I buy personally makes about 250 to 300 pounds per month that's the kind of numbers that we achieve HMO slightly more uh, that's on a net net profit basis after mortgage um, after management voids bad debts all those things so the calculation is developed end value times by 0.8 minus your renovation and that's your offer price it's as simple as that um, now knowing how little room there is for maneuver in all this could be a good thing or a bad thing couldn't it uh, for some landlords if they don't know the formula um, they'll be constantly off the mark if you buy five houses just off the mark you will struggle to buy number six um, you'll be unlikely to get to number 10 i'll be honest if you 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 you, you might wiggle your way through and have figured out the formula by that point, and that's, that's how you can break through. Um, however, if you do know the formula, um, and it's a simple process, then you can just repeat it over and over again. So the fact it's so specific makes it easy enough to learn, uh, but it is also, um, yeah, if you don't know it, you don't know it. There is just one type of deal, a very small number of variables and quite a small mar margin for movement, that's what I'm saying. So you can see how that would make it both easy and hard. Easy comes with knowledge, and that's what we're trying to do now. So out of all the beginners I speak to who don't go on to buy uh, multiple properties, I notice some common mistakes and common uh, traits, if you like. I, I don't want to come across as super serious, and I don't want, so don't take these the wrong way, but in order to be as useful as possible, I'm going to try and point some of these things out in the, in, in the, uh, in, in the video process. So. Uh, if you're like most people, and of course we're all like most people, right? Um, then some of the points that I'm going to cover in a moment are going to, you're going to try and dismiss them. You're going to say uh, some of them are just super obvious. Um, some of the points I make you're going to be skeptical about. Um, some of them you're going to be uh, tempted to meddle with, you know, do it, do it a slightly different way. Um, bend the rules, bend the formula, or probably making it slightly more complicated. My sincere advice to you now is to keep it really, really simple for the first 10 properties. And I guarantee 
almost guarantee that on the 11th, 12th and 13th property, you wouldn't complicate it much after that anyway, because you'll have learned keeping it simple is when things work. Um, some of you might, this is search for a bit of excitement, you know, um, or worse, putting your stamp on a property. How many times have I heard that? When it, that's an alarm bell. An alarm bell rings when somebody says, I want to put my stamp on a property. Don't. Um, you are going to be doing some things in a very specific way and that will be enough that will be putting your stamp on the property but what, what people generally mean when they say that is they're going through an interior design exercise or something and that is not what we're doing we're buying on the numbers we're investing if you want an excitement resist buying boring vanilla boxes uh, that meet the golden formula um is is the way forward uh if you want some excitement, go get it elsewhere. Go skydiving or something. Um, you don't want your investment to be exciting, do you? Um, you want it to be profitable. So let's get going. F find the, the, you know, that, that section of what I'm trying to cover off today. It's gonna to be a video of two halves. So the first half is um, what to look for, what a property looks like, you know, where it is, what it looks like. Uh, and the second half is how to find that property. You know, So we need to define what it is we're looking for before we can find it. So what to look for. Um, something you'll notice as well, um, I make no apologies for this, though, though I've tried to keep uh, the fine, fix, rent, repeat separate, I'm going to start talking about all of those in all the videos. And I've got to. It's a formula. It's balanced. If you remove one part, it doesn't work. So uh, when we're trying to find the right property, we must have an idea of what the cost of the renovation will be, the quality of it, how much it will rent for. It's all part of the formula, isn't it? So. Um, not realizing that link and this is the first beginner mistake i want to point out is it, 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 it is it's beginner mistake number one um do not get into a deal unless you can see your way all the way through to the end of it simple as that uh, unless you know the final calculations and you, you don't want to be working any of this stuff out in the middle of the property renovation or when you come to rent it before you even commit to buying it before you even offer the, the, the purchase price um you need to know all of these figures. So you've got to be sure of the outcome. Um, how are you going to fix it? How are you going to rent it? How, are you going to, how that's going to allow you to repeat? So that's number one. Don't buy it. Simply do not buy a deal unless you are sure of all these things. So don't rush out and buy a house now when we're talking about find. Wait till we've got to the end of these video series and you've got it absolutely together to make that kind of decision. So for starters, what does the first property look uh, What does the right property look like? Personally, I like freehold houses. Um, not leasehold flats. Um, I like the control and certainty that a freehold property brings. If you were to buy a leasehold flat, be sure to calculate the service charge and the ground rent in the whole profitability. Um, not only be sure of that, but if the service charge is low, make sure that it's enough. You know, For example, if that roof does start leaking, uh, is there enough money in the sinking fund to pay for it? Uh, or will the service charge rock it up? Are they allowed to put it up? Um, you usually can't have both. If it's quite low, you might find it's a poorly maintained property and you're out of that loop. You can't control that so much. There are ways around that. You can do a right to, right to manage and those kind of things, but again, it's a bit of hassle, isn't it? Um, I buy freehold two and three bedroom houses. I can find them. They fit the golden formula where I am. Um, where, where they don't, um, you know, where, where an area has become so that I can't find them anymore, I move areas, as, as simple as that. I know some people, you know, you, you, that, that's not something you want to do, so you might have to look for something that works, but don't bend the rules too much. Um, some side benefits, your families stay longer. Two or three bedroom house generally attracts a, a family, and they tend to stay longer than, uh, I have got some flats. Um, I wouldn't sell them, you know, I don't sell properties, but uh, you know, I, I still, still have them, um, but I have found that the tenants in flats are more transient, so the tenants in houses stay longer. So I like houses. I'd try and buy them if, if, I, if I can. If you do need to buy flats, make sure you work around all the figures. Um, so where is that property? Um, now, listen carefully. This is beginning mistake number two. Most landlords know that they shouldn't buy a house like the one they live in to rent out. Um, rent levels don't follow property values. So... Um, a £100,000 house might rent for £700, pounds, £750, uh, but a £200,000 house doesn't rent for £1,500. Pounds. So naturally, the smaller, cheaper properties have a better yield. So um, I think most landlords understand that, 
but there's a lack of calibration. They simply don't come down far enough. Maybe they live in a five bed detached house and they scoot around the corner a quarter of a mile and buy a three bed semi-detached house, which is roughly in the same area and they know it and it's all familiar. Um, I'm afraid that's not gonna do it. Um, the best way I can think of to describe it, and this is the sort of the, the, form, the method I use, is um, if you think that number one is a very rough area and number 10 is Millionaire's Row, you do not want to buy number one and you do not want to buy number two. You do want to buy number three and number four. You cannot buy in number five and number six. The yield just is not there. Practically speaking, that means in the UK, you're buying a house somewhere between 50 and 150,000 um, pounds. 100,000 pounds is very much the, uh, the, the sort of the average price, end value, um, where, where it works. Um, so that, that's cluing you in. For a lot of people, that is a surprise. And I, I take, I've seen the look on some landlords' faces when I take them around an area where you can buy a house for £100,000 or a house for £50,000, and um, they don't understand it. I can see that. You know, they, they might even be a little bit wary or scared of it. Um, one thing I'm going to point out right now, um, well, first of all, it's, it's where roughly 60% of the UK's population live, in that kind of house. So this is mass market. Yeah? Um, I know where most landlords live, and uh, it might not be the kind of area where a land, the, the landlords I know would aspire to live, for sure, um, but we're not talking about buying areas one and two, so we're not gonna be scared to live there. Any house that I own, I'll be happy to put you know, my kids in there if, 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 if I needed to, that, that wouldn't be a problem for me. Um, but something that I'm gonna dispel now, and I know why um, landlords have got that look on their face when they're going around an area like this, um, it's absolutely a myth that an area like a three or a four is going to attract a bad tenant. There is just, just, just as much likelihood of that bad tenant going into property in area three or four as there is in an area six or seven or eight. You know, uh, The risk is higher at the higher end, of course, and also allowing that tenant in there, that's just bad management. Um, I speak to landlords regularly who've got houses in the areas where we have them, and they say, oh, I don't like that area. Um, the tenants terrible and they think that by buying in a nicer area lesser yield coming down they're gonna find a nicer tenant completely not a myth there are decent people that will rent any of those houses and there are bad people that let rent, of the, rent any of those houses you need defense to not let a bad tenant in it's as simple as that we'll cover that off later on but do not think that when you're going around an area three or four which is where you need to buy um, it's where most of the UK live most as in you know 60 odd percent um, that you're going to find a bad tenant or get only have a bad tenant by going upscale somehow you'll have a, a this thing that you know, works better because a tenant pays better or, or something myth good management takes care of that um next let, let's cover this off as well so um local amenities um schools bus stops train stations those kind of things i'm going to label this be beginner mistake number three now it's not that this isn't important um but it is overemphasized, and it's usually overemphasized. I've noticed in property education courses, it's almost as if whoever's writing the course thinks, "Well, I've got to fill two hours, and I'll just make it." I'm not saying it's not important. It is important. I'm just saying it's pretty easy to work it out. Have you seen any house in a town or city um, where the kids can't get to school, or there isn't a bus? You know. Um, it doesn't happen, you know. In your very quick and easy research, if it looks right, it's pretty much right. There's, there's no big shakes to this. Of course, if it's closer to a train station, it might be worth more and it might rent for more. But it's all factored in. You're you working that out anyway. There's no big shakes to this. Almost every two or three bed um, did, yeah, house is going to be is going to be in the right place. So that that that's that one covered off. That is beginning mistake number two. And I see people procrastinating over it and thinking, is this the best place? And you know all those things. Um, have you ever seen Town City without buses? Of course you haven't. No. Um, right. Next. Um, unless so you, you you now know where the house is. Sorry. Let's get clear, you're going to be buying a smelly house. <laughs> let, let, let's, let's say this out. Um, with some problems, and you're going to have to devote some time to fixing those problems. Uh, you know, some kind of renovation. We're developing to rent. Here is beginner mistake number four. Um, and that is expecting all this to come easy. You're buying a property with problems. Get used to it. Uh, it's called develop to rent because you're going to have to develop the thing um, to add a value. 
the value is the equity, the capital, profit if you sold it, but we're not selling it, uh, the rocket fuel that pr will propel the growth of your property portfolio. Um, but you can't create that equity, that profit, without getting your hands dirty. Um, potentially, the more work you do, the more profit you stand to make. Um, you're looking like for houses like this. Uh, we'll put some pictures on the screen now and they'll, they'll scroll across because a picture sp uh, speaks a thousand words, of course. For some, tackling this kind of job, it's hard work. Um, and you need to learn how to make renovating a house like this easy. Don't let it put you off in the search for a house that the houses look like this. These are the things that need to draw you to a house, not repel you. Later on, I'll show you a way of renovating a house that needs new kitchen, new bathroom, windows, roofing, rewire, you know, new gas under heating, plastering, all joinery, everything. I'll make it all feel easy, you know, just like heavy decoration. I, I say, putting a new roof in a house, heavy decoration, you know. I'll give somebody a keys, and I get them back, and when it's finished, it's done. That's the way you want it. Why am I mentioning fix now when we're talking about find, you know? Um, because you're need, gonna need to find a property that needs fixing. If that puts you off, stop right now. Um, you will not find properties that meet the golden formula calculation if you aren't prepared to develop a property. Um, so while the property scroll and have a look through, what about the second half? We know what we're looking for. Now, how do you find these smelly houses? I regularly ask people what it is that's holding them back from building the property empire, and, and the answer I get is, I can't find, I can't find the properties. Um, I, be, I think it's a big stumbling block for most landlords, and it doesn't need to be. Um, now you know what the right house looks like, you're a giant leap forward, and I hope that it feels like that. Um, exactly how to find these properties, who sells them, how much to pay, how to work out end valuations, how to, to negotiate the sale, we'll cover all that off in the next video. For now, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe, subscribe, thank you. Uh, and also, as promised, if you check through the video's description, you'll find a link where you can join our mailing list and you'll receive some viewing tools. You're gonna need those viewing tools for the next video. Um, they show you how to write things down, it's a you know, place to record things and some, uh, some ways to do your calculation on there as well. So uh, subscribe to the, um, the list, there's a, there's a link in the video description. Um, subscribe to YouTube and you'll get these videos, the next one come through uh, automatically. Um, that's it for today and uh, we'll see you in video number three. Bye for now.